Victory, man stands at the crossroads. Any ballistic missile which can carry a nuclear warhead on an intercontinental range can carry in its nose instead a few instruments on a trip to the moon. The choices between a new, undreamed-off horizon and universal destruction. Which shall it be? The space race began on October 4th, 1957 with the launching by the Soviets of the Sputnik satellite. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. This first satellite was today successfully launched in the USSR. America was shocked. How could communist technology surpass our own? More important, what did it mean for military supremacy in outer space? Senator Lyndon Johnson of Texas tried to calm us down some. Well, the information we received uh, does not lead us to any conclusions uh, of helplessness uh, or despair. We're lagging in both uh, the satellite and missile field. But there's no reason to believe that we cannot catch up if we have the will to win and if we just pitch in and get going. One month after Sputnik, the Soviets sent the first living being, a dog named Laika, up into space. America tried to launch a satellite before very long, but the launch was not a spectacular success. Dragon White Checker Chantry Tower has now been pulled aside and brought back a distance of perhaps 200 yards to completely expose the three-stage rocket to view. Here she goes, plainly shooting out from under the bottom of it. And a huge, huge ball of fire rising up perhaps uh, 100 feet. The Soviets the expressed their sympathy. The Thanks, we said, and went back to work doing the testing that was needed to be done in order to send a man into space. One test simulated weightlessness. It was observed by Walter Cronkite. This is Walter Cronkite reporting from the cabin of a C-131 over Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Dayton, Ohio. This aircraft is executing a maneuver to make it and everyone in it temporarily weightless. What are the hazards and what are our scientists doing to ensure man's survival in the hostile environment of outer space? One way to ensure that survival was to send up animals first. Mice, then monkeys, then a robot would precede man into space. The early flights with animals and robots were successful. Meanwhile, the more mundane needs of men in space were being seen to, as Walter Cronkite learned in a visit with an Air Force nutritionist. Well, Miss Finkelstein, can you show us your ideal kitchen for a flight to the moon? Yes, I'd love to. This is our freezing unit. Here we have uh, bread and butter sandwiches, and we also have fruit in uh, cans. Well, now, uh, what are these containers? Uh, they're obviously special, but what is the special function of them? Well, Why do they look like this? They look like this so that a man will be able to eat in zero G, or in a state of weightlessness. May I try it? Certainly. Okay. Is it loaded? Yes, it is. Just like this, hmm? Right. Hmm, roast beef. In 1958, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration was established. Of 508 candidates, seven men were chosen to be the astronauts of Project Mercury, the first step toward landing man on the moon. These test pilots were the space age equivalents of World War I's aces. America promptly fell in love with them and eagerly followed every minute of their training. But the first man into space was not an American. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin, a Russian cosmonaut, went entirely around the Earth one time out there in space. Americans were not happy. We don't want uh, 
uh, find the hammer and sickle flag standing up on one of the peaks of the moon. We want it to be the Star Spangled Banner. Within one month of Gagarin's flight, on May 5th, 1961, a day that few Americans will ever forget, NASA crews readied astronaut Alan Shepard for the flight of Freedom 7. It was perfect. For those who were keeping score, and everybody was keeping score, America was finally on the scoreboard. Okay, Freedom 7. On the periscope, what a beautiful view. On a tour of America's rocket facilities, President Kennedy told the nation what our goal had to be. It was time, literally, to shoot for the moon. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. John Glenn was our next ace in space. Less than a year after Alan Shepard's flight, Glenn would get his chance at history. A journey three times around the Earth at a speed of nearly 18,000 miles an hour. The country held its breath. All recorders to fast, T-minus 18 seconds and counting engines start. May the wee ones be with you, Thomas. Good Lord, ride all the way. 